Hush, my rose, still, and look at the moon tonight. Do you see the shadows there? This world is full of twisty frights and spooks who love to scare. Feel how the wind blows through your bones. See the trees. Stop shaking, and shiver Just like the wind We take to light And make the groan and quiver As they fly away with the moonlight on their wings, you'll join their merry heart someday. Hear how they howl and sing. One step ahead while they're tucked in bed You'll find secrets dark and secrets deep There is magic inside of you Six, five, four, start three, sure, two, go. Welcome, everyone, to Mystic Moon Cafe. My name is June, and I have the amazing Wendy. Hi, June. How are you this evening, my dear? <laughs> oh, I am just peachy keen, jelly bean. Good that's deal. about it. Though. <laughs> <laughs> And that's you all know, we're going to say. Yep. All I have to say is fake it until you make it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we actually, the male voice you're hearing with us, we actually have Kevin Walder with us too. He's kind of joining us for, um, you know, a, a couple hours of fun and questions and tarot and all sorts of exciting things. But uh, so why don't I just ask, why, how was everyone's week? Huh? Well, um, I woke up to snow this morning, and um, it's going to be down to, like, minus 15 tonight. Um, Yay! I'm in Seattle! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Wendy. <laughs> that would be Kansas City weather for you, and it'll probably be 75 degrees yeah. Saturday. <laughs> That's how crazy it is. You know, it always makes me laugh when people try to use that um, out here in Seattle, because, you know, they're like, well, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. I'm like, um, yeah. No. <laughs> Fine, <Seattle> yeah. <laughs> is actually nothing like that. Seattle sometimes we'll stay at 45 degrees you know or you know the low 40 degrees and the high 45 degrees for like weeks sometimes yep. and Kansas City will be minus 15 degrees today and maybe 75 degrees tomorrow 
Mm-hmm. I am not <laughs> joking. <laughs> yeah, that's just no. that's just only a bare yeah. uh, exaggeration. <laughs> yeah, my daughter lives in Texas, and they have a very similar kind of climate to you. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's mm-hmm. uh, I watch her stuff all the time too. So you're just Sorry. like, oh no, thanks. <laughs> No, no, no tornadoes. That's what we don't need. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't miss those either. No. Yeah, yeah I was actually in um, several, you know, when I was younger. Um, but uh, I think the worst one was when I was fishing in a boat with my great uncle. And all of a sudden, it was almost like the Wizard of Oz, where you look out in the distance and you just start seeing this funnel cloud start forming and, and Weatherby, Missouri. And uh, oh you start seeing it start forming about maybe, oh, maybe a mile away. But you can see it because, of course, it's all flat and it's all right. farmland. Mm-hmm. And my uncle says, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we might want to start making our way back to the shore. And we didn't make it in time. And we both had to jump in the water and hold on to the pier until it passed but it didn't go over us directly it was just the wind and you know we didn't see cows flying around us <laughs> <laughs> oh man no, that's no cows. <laughs> but but were of... you in kansas when you no 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 it was missouri <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we did not fly to kansas to be the rainbow. <laughs> that would have been awesome though <laughs> Did uh, the good witch? Ah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, home and, sweet home. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a pretty good week too. I, um, um, you know, we've just been really, really busy at work. It seems like it's just getting busier and busier. So, just glad that uh, the strike is over, and hopefully, it will not oh. repeat again with all the nurses and everything. It was a pretty emotional, hard time for everybody. So. Um, you know, just a, a lot of, a lot of strife, a lot of strife going on, but, uh, <sighs> I, hadn't, I hadn't heard about the settlement. Uh, so I'm glad to hear that because that was, Actually, nope, not settled. <laughs> oh, it's not. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. oh darn. <laughs> they're in negotiations again. So oh, no, okay. no settled okay. yet, but that, that part is over. So we'll see what happens next, but you know, my heart goes out to everybody. Let's just say it was very emotional for everyone. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Man. <laughs> Can't even tell you. It's not like it's a car company, you know. Um, when people at a car company go on strike, it's cars. When, you know, nurses go on strike, it's it's patients and people's lives. So it's a whole other it's a whole other story. So right. it's just you know, very, like I said, very emotional on every side with, you know, this, that subject. So, but, uh, but let's just say, whew, at least that yeah. part's over. So we'll see what happens next. <laughs> Good. Hopefully everything goes well. I hope yes. so. Yes. Well, my week was pretty good too. We had a little sunshine and a lot of rain, but we had a little sunshine. We're going to talk about the sunshine. <laughs> Yay, sunshine! <laughs> when did you have sunshine? Did, I don't remember seeing you know, sunshine. <laughs> it happens every couple of days, and it's like just out of nowhere. It's you know, it'll be pouring one minute, and then all of a sudden it's bright, and it's yeah, it's 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 weird. Well, so. you know, that's what's funny is, um, you know, when we talk about we talk about sun breaks out here. <laughs> and people There's look at look sword. at it kind of funny and it's so you know it's what we say all the time oh we had you know maybe an hour sun break <laughs> but you know, <laughs> you know a lot of people talk about clouds and you know being you know partly cloudy it was like no we we, <laughs> we don't say that we say <laughs> we partly had a sun funny. break <laughs> exactly <laughs> when so, um my my aunt passed away a couple well, maybe it's more like five or six years ago now, but she lived down um, in Franklin, Tennessee. And um, when we were uh, saying the the final prayer over her, her uh, not mausoleum, but she was in a drawer there and mm-hmm. it was outside and it had been cloudy and yucky and sticky and icky down there like it gets so much. And um, all of a sudden, you know, as we're saying the amens and, and what have you, and you, these these come from childhood uh, prayers and basically for me, but um, the one ray of sunshine burst through 
You can't see me in in chat or anything, but my hands are in the air and shone <laughs> shine right onto her faceplate there. The wow, that's that was pretty awesome. The, yeah, Aww. that was the yes. coolest thing. Um, that is. Cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. My cousin and I argued then that it was either Grandma or Julie. Um, <laughs> you know, because we were sure that either one or both could make that happen. Mm. It was just neat. Just you, neat, neat, neat. You never know. Mm -hmm. That's pretty exactly. awesome. Exactly. <laughs> yep. That is good. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Well, we wanted to say, too, that um, our Jake is uh, wandering the streets of New Orleans this uh, this week. So that's why he's not with us tonight. Right. And, yeah. um, you know, who knows what hoodoo voodoo he is getting <laughs> up to tonight. <laughs> Yeah. He's going down I told there him for to work. pass out cards so that we yes. can have some of them on. <laughs> exactly. He's going down there for work. So it's not yeah. like he's going to be, you know, willy nilly having, you know, the best time in the world. But maybe he does. He like he loves his job. But um <laughs> I think they were having severe thunderstorms down there today. Oh no. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe that'll just add some ambiance to the, there outside, we go. the yeah. outside ghost tour he's taking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. but we, we miss him when he's not with us. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm, that's uh, awesome. But anyway, um, tonight we invited Kevin on and he graciously... Yay. Uh, hey air with us and it, i the first i've i've known you for quite a while but our interactions have all been on facebook so this is cool nice to meet you face to face guys nice to see you too <laughs> <laughs> and um we're gonna talk about tarot and med daily meditation so um i'm gonna hand that off because I know a little about tarot <laughs> not so much about how it uh integrates with daily meditations huh? well you know, I actually, I was going to say before we start that, um, Kevin, why don't you tell us about yourself? There you go. A little Thank something you. about uh, yourself, you know. Uh, I mean, just saying, <laughs> if you want to, you don't okay. have to. <laughs> well, um, I'm an artist and an author. I've written a couple of different books. The, the two books I've written so far are on the subject of tarot. And I always say I'm a student because I don't think you ever stop being a student and or a collector <laughs> if you're if you're into tarot you have uh, one deck will never do five decks will never do um i've gotten 60 or so i think and that's that's not even close to being a record there are friends that i know that have a lot more I was going to say, do, do people have a, an intervention with you sometimes, Kevin? I'm just, I was just checking. <laughs> Actually, I, I had an intervention with myself about oh. <laughs> six years ago, and I sold about 75 of my decks. Wow. Because I wasn't using them at all. They were just, they, I mean, they, they were collector. And I still have the, the, the best of the bunch right. that I collected. But I have different decks for different reasons. And so I use uh, certain decks for spiritual questions, and a certain deck will be for more daily life questions. Uh, romance questions might go in a different d uh, direction. So go in the trash for me. No, sorry. Go, <laughs> go ahead. I'll stop interrupting. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. That hanged man is right there for June every time. <laughs> Well, the oh, hanged man, now, Kevin. <laughs> the hanged man is one of my absolute favorite cards. In oh, fact, he is really? my favorite card. Yes. Okay. Um, well, first of all, the hanged man doesn't. It's not, even the visual isn't the same as what you get in your mind when you hear the words hanged man. He's hanging by an ankle. He's he's not his life is not in danger. He's a little uncomfortable, and he's being forced <laughs> to take a time out. But more importantly. He's being forced to look at the world in a different direction. He's being forced to change his perspective totally and look at things differently. And that's what I like about him is he's um, what he says to me is no matter what the situation, no matter how challenging it may look, no matter how dire it may look, there's always a different perspective. And oh, you, like you can shake up your own little snow globe and get that different perspective and it's really think about all our issues all our problems and all the things that we deal with on a daily basis 
it's all because of the way we look at them. True. It's all because of the way we we assume that someone meant something when they said such and such. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those kinds of things <clears throat> color the experience to the point where it may change it completely to the point where we're we're no longer really dealing with the experience anymore we're dealing with our impression of the experience which is yeah usually it's it's flawed <laughs> by no, our, own, often, right. our own invention yeah so so yeah as far as um i've i've been studying the tarot for for oh, goodness over 20 years, I've forgotten how many now. Um, but basically I started off just doing readings for myself, which any tarot reader will tell you is one of the most frustrating things you can do. And I was sort of dragged kicking and screaming to an event where uh, someone asked me to do a reading for them. I was I was nervous as oh my goodness I I couldn't believe how nervous I was and I had a brand new deck that I had barely used and it was well there are some decks that out there that can be almost pornographic this one wasn't quite there <laughs> but it was close um, there are, yeah there's just certain certain artists will take their their uh, impressions a little to the next step and this okay. was it was a beautiful deck. Um, and I did a reading for a lady who uh, insisted I was the one to do her reading. And I had a card show up that was just like, oh, and I mean, I'm looking at this card. It's sitting in the center of a table. And I'm like, what am I going to say? How am I going to do this? How am I going to tell her what this? Uh, and so I, I asked a series of questions. Are you acquainted with this uh, character in pagan religion? Are you acquainted with this character? She had no clue, no idea, never heard of those people. Oh, wow. <sighs> well, this yes, was a, you go. <laughs> this was a, uh, the imagery on this card was a wild man. Uh, he was dressed in, in uh, indigenous, like you, would, you might see from uh, Aborigines, maybe. Uh, that kind of um, scanty, you know, cover, and oh. he's holding <clears throat> his manhood. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Almost, so threat have... <laughs> almost threateningly. Oh my! And I, so I'm. I mean, I'm seriously. I'm sweating bullets. This woman is in her sixties. She is not. <laughs> this is not something I'm prepared to discuss with her. Mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> and so I, I, I finally, I just, I just, I just let a big sigh. And I said, well, I said, the only thing I could tell you about this card is it's talking to you about raw male energy. And she just, her face lit up. She got this huge, big smile on her face and she kind of chuckled. She said, I don't know what that's all about. Well, just long story short, she was basically juggling three different men at the oh, time. Oh, my. <laughs> One of which was about 30 years her junior and married. <laughs> and, Go and, granny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's why she's telling me that. And my, my, I, I'm like, I, I can't believe this little grandmotherly person is <laughs> telling me this story. You and have to close I, your mouth. Oh. <laughs> So I, at, uh, finally, I said, um, well, lucky you. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so that's pretty much. So that was the point where I thought, okay, <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> so, so from there, I got I got more and more interested in, in pulling things together. So, And that's what I'm here to talk about, I guess. So you awesome. want me just to jump right in or you sure. want to? Okay. Sure. Whatever you'd like to do. And we can, you know, if we want to go oh, back yeah. and forth with other questions or, or whatever, yes. you know, it's like. Since I can't see that um, chat. So if you see something, just you know, please just, you know. Oh, I will. Absolutely. Jump right in. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, I'll talk about what I'm going to talk about. No, that's it. I can't. There you go. Can you see that? <laughs> 22 Teachers. This is my book, uh, the latest one. This is called 22 Teachers, Healing Lessons from the Major Arcana. Um, 
what I decided to do, and that's where this uh, meditation idea, I mean, it's, it's not new. Uh, the cards have been used for centuries in meditation um, because they are um, visual visually stimulating they uh, can lead you and open your intuition so that you're able to see things maybe a little bit differently than you might normally see them mm -hmm. and intuition being uh, you know a key <clears throat> part of using the tarot uh, there are some basic basic uh, meanings that go with each uh, card but I always say, don't let that get in the way of what it's saying to you right now, because you may look at this, well, this card, I'll pull one out. This card, you may look at it um, today and get one impression and tomorrow you get a totally different impression. It'll look so radically different. You'll see different things. There's so much imagery that you'll you'll pick out different colors or you'll pick out different items that will jump out and mm -hmm. that will color your reading as well so what i decided to do with this book was give the cards the personalities that they deserve okay mm -hmm. we kind of tend to think about them as being mono <laughs> they they have a singular meaning and this is it thou shalt not deviate um <laughs> and that i that's kind of where i was with this with this idea is they're multi-dimensional they're just like you they're just like me they are they have lots of different facets to show you and <laughs> they don't show you all of them in every reading so you will have uh, various opportunities to get acquainted with the different sides of the of each card. So I picked out three cards that I'm going to um, use them as I uh, kind of talk to you about what I wrote about them in the book. And then we'll talk about how that will equate into your, uh, into your meditation. So the first card that I chose to talk about tonight is this one. Can you see that one okay? Um, I, maybe I cannot a little see. closer. Oh, okay. Closer? <laughs> I was like, there I There we can't go. See. Okay, the Empress. Is that better? Uh, the Empress. Yes, very much so. <laughs> now, um, I won't be able to hold that there forever. But <laughs> oh, you can take it down. No, yeah. That <laughs> but the, uh, the Empress, if you looked at the card, she is often shown as uh, being pregnant. Okay, she mm -hmm. is surrounded by everything. She's surrounded by fish, uh, whales, uh, geese. She's surrounded by all kinds of flora and fauna. She's a, basically got everything under control. She is the ultimate mother in the card. Mm -hmm. So, excuse me. Um, her influence, I mean, she's she's creative, she's uh, nurturing, she's the person that she's the, she's one of the one of the energies that will come through and and say, here, let me let me hold you. Let me let me make it better. OK, they aren't all that nice. No. <laughs> Some of them are a little more uh, intent and she's she's one that will make room. So. This is what I said about the Empress as I as I put myself into her place. And this is a letter that she has written to her children. Now, her children, that's all of us and everything around us, okay? So she says, I'll bet you weren't expecting to hear from your mother today, but I've been thinking so much about all of you and how much you mean to me and hopefully how much you mean to each other as well, but I decided to send you something by which to remember me. Since before the birth of this earth as we know it, I have been the force behind creation and fertility. Whether you are soaring high above the earth or swimming in the vast waterways or walking or slithering on the surface of her, or even if you are part of that vegetari veg vegetarian, <laughs> vegetation, <laughs> vegetation mm -hmm. that adorns her, 
This earth is your home, and you, all of you, are related through me. Think about that for a second. That's powerful stuff. It is. So I go on. She, she says, this is why it's so difficult for me to watch any of you take advantage of or hurt one another. You are all siblings through my power and of my body. I have nurtured each of you from conception to birth and way beyond. With each new beginning you experience in your life, I share in that birth with you. None of you, sorry, I make some paper noise, have ever had anything occur in your lives that I have not already blessed and smiled as you opened to the new possibilities. Oh. Nothing can come to us without her blessing. Pretty powerful stuff again. Very much so. I am unconditional love personified. Think about that. You know, that's our mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Definitely. I am here to teach and nurture your development. I'm here to support and comfort you when things become difficult and to help you transform a challenge into a victory. I will never stop helping until the time you decide that you no longer accept my help. And even then, you're still going to hear from me. Okay? She's not going to give up. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, the, the job of mom uh, goes on forever. It never stops. So that's kind of where she is. That's who she is. What is this experience like for me? Well, it seems that I've been pregnant with possibilities my entire life. And through that gestation, I know that no matter what the challenge is, no matter how the offspring may look to others, no matter how appreciative that offspring might turn out to be, I will love and care for all my children the same. No one is more important than any other. Which also means that you must treat your siblings, and that means all of them, as if they were part of you, parts of yourself. Okay? okay. As, as your mother, there may be aspects of me that you'd prefer not to think about, but in order to understand me fully, you need to know. Being the life giver and seemingly perpetually pregnant means that I'm also very sensuous and sexual. So my unconditional love can take on an erotic aspect as well. And that's an inherent part of my being. You know, we hear so much judgmental talk about erotic uh, anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yet without it, we would none of us be here. Not That's a true. single one of us would be here. That's so right. <laughs> what are you really rejecting? So this gives me a great deal of empathy and understanding of your own conditions and life choices. So she's not judgmental. She's not sitting there trying to force her children into a mold. She's willing to let them bloom and let them blossom. Ah, so now we get a little heavier. She said, this brings me to my planetary attribution, which is Venus. A very that sensual, yeah, very sensual influence combined with my elemental attribution of Earth. It tends to define my entire existence. And of course, my energy is, it's feminine. Now, that's something I'm working on right now <laughs> with the cards, is um, I'm trying to remove gender uh, from the cards. Okay, mm -hmm. so, I'm, so okay. instead of calling it masculine and feminine, it's assertive, passive, whatever. There's, you know, there, there are other, other words that can be used that are not quite so maybe confining as mm -hmm. we loosen the way we understand that part of ourselves. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> part of my sen sorry, <laughs> part of my <laughs> sensuality allows me to truly feel 
all of your emotions, even before you're fully aware of them. Um, I'm going to skip that part. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Lovely have... sinus weather we're having, right? <laughs> oh, oh, God, tell me about it. Oh, I know. It's Especially out here with, with the constant rain out know, here. Constant so. rain. Yeah. So she goes on to say, not all of my births are in the physical. Sometimes I'm just the midwife assisting in the birth of a grandchild. I'm also the force which brings into being all of your new concepts, your new ideas. When you feel your heart race at the thought of a new idea, which was, has been on your mind for a few days, well, that's just me. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> that's, that's my influence, assisting you and pulling that new idea into the reality of the day. And when it does come about, we can share the joy of that birth. And when it doesn't turn out the way you had hoped, well, I'm still there. I'll comfort you and console you and encourage you to regroup. Try again. I do have one thing, one thing that's a weakness for me, and that is my need to be involved and available for everyone. Sometimes <laughs> this, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes this causes me to lose track of my own needs. I talked about my sexual nature earlier, but I have all the same needs as you, my children, for their physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. There are moments when I fail to regard my own needs as just as important as all of yours, which leaves me depleted. So I often have to remind myself that I'm no good to anyone if I haven't taken the time and effort to see to my own well-being. Something else I want to address are the inevitable comparisons between myself and the other feminine members of the deck, or less uh, assertive maybe, perhaps. Um, I think you can see the obvious difference in attitude between myself and the high priestess. Yeah, okay, the high priestess, uh, she's another, she's feminine, she's a teacher, but by golly, you don't go to her to get a Band-Aid. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> because she's not, that's not, she's not in that business. Mm -hmm. She is in the business of teaching you, and if you want the best teacher, she'll, she'll do it. But she is not there to pamper you and tell you it's going to be okay. This is the job of the Empress. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, let's see. We can't all be touchy-feely. But some people will ask, well, what about the queens in the deck? Are they are they in good close? Well, none of them are actually similar. <laughs> if any of the queens were to be like me in any way, it would be a loose combination of aspects of the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Coins. Okay? There are four queens in the deck, and the two, the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Coins, are they're kind of the nice ones. The other two, look out. You don't want their energy. Hmm. Well, yes, you do. You just In want to certain be able, circumstances. You want to be able to constructively use it. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so <clears throat> there the other queens are too involved in the intrigues of court and the needs of their own children. They have their own role to play in the story of life. So yeah, don't don't compare. They're not they're really not comparable. I have written this letter to convey my love and to help each of you understand your mother a little better. I know that sometimes it feels like I'm meddling in everything <laughs> that you set out to do, but I hope you can see now that it's just, it's just my job. And I love my job. I love it so much I won't let anyone else interfere with my doing it. So whether you're part of that vegetation surrounding us, you're winging your way above the trees, you're swimming in the waves and currents, or you're slithering across the ground, or using any number of legs to move on this glorious earth, this is a reminder of your mother's love. Mm. And please, please, for your mother's sake, love each other and me 
as you honor the commitment that I have made to you every day for your well-being. Really nice. So that's, that's, and the that, Empress. that's the idea of the Empress. And it gives, gives her some... It, it fills her out a little bit. She's not right. this little, you know, little box. She's actually more, she's involved in everything. <laughs> if you stop yeah. and think about it. So, so in meditation, you can take that image of the Empress. And as I always, meditation is, it's prayer. Prayer is when you do all the talking. Meditation is when you st shut up and listen. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that's what that's what this card is. That's what they. That's what all the cards do. They trigger your intuition so that you have something to listen to. <laughs> you you have a message that you are trying to that you're trying to connect with, and so that's. That's that has been one of the most fun projects I've ever done was putting together those um, characters and giving them uh, giving them a giving them a a face you know they're, say, so. where people can relate to a lot more mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, definitely and what a beautiful message that was too especially in this um, mm -hmm. I would say in this climate that we are having now when uh, it seems like there's a lot more hate going around than there has been in a while just my opinion but no. uh, it's it's a beautiful beautiful message. I like that. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's too bad when we yeah. look at all. and how we treat each other is just appalling, and it's yeah. so, it's just it's so unnecessary and and unreal. Mm hmm. And you, know, you see that more and more, of course, online than mm -hmm. you, you know, I mean, I mean, you see it kind of equally, you know, in person and online, but online, I think it gives a lot more people a little more, say, freedom mm -hmm. to, um, you know, express anonymity. themselves as negative. Yeah, anonymity to express themselves as negatively as possible and try to, you know, make other people feel really, you know, really bad, but it's just uh, really sad. Yeah. It's too. It's too bad. So, so uh, did we have questions? Any anybody pop up with anything? Uh oh, I've lost uh, Wendy's sound. Uh oh, I think Wendy. I think she might be muted. Wendy, Wendy. Okay. <laughs> it muted okay. me. I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Your, lip, your lips were moving, but nothing was coming out. <laughs> Oh, you know, that's, that's kind of a habit. <laughs> so, One of my traits. <laughs> so did we nope. have any questions? No? No questions so far that I've seen. Um, okay. Seth? <laughs> awesome. Seth says that uh, they can hear me. Well, oh, you can yeah. hear me now. Everybody can hear me now. <laughs> So hopefully she hasn't been talking this whole time and we've been like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> we've got video going and so I would have started charades. Charades, yeah. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one thing I, I, I had always wondered about, about the tarot, um, I mean, from what it sounds like is it's maybe... I mean, how would you describe it? I mean, basically, it's it's us uh, pulling cards and and um, I was going to say kind of working on things that are inside us. Um, how we can? How would you describe it better? I mean, for you know, a lot of people thinking that it might have some you know supernatural influence, and um, I mean, I don't know. I understand your question. Yes, thank you. I'm so glad you do because I have a real hard time expressing myself. It's, it's one we get all the time. Um, and some people don't bother to ask. They just assume they already know because, you know, some of them have been told that mm -hmm. it's evil, it's this, oh, it's yes. that. Um, I look at the, first of all, the first thing that I always and this is true of whether it's tarot card or um, prayer beads or anything else, crystals, whatever. Anytime you decide that you need to give them extra power, 
that they have something they can, you know, whatever power generate, um, that's, you've lost control. It, they, they are a tool, and that is all they are. It is a tool. And this is a tool to trigger your intuition. When you see a particular scene or particular card, you get an instant feel for it. Whether it's the color or the imagery that, you know, whether it looks like there's a battle or there's, you know, whatever, whatever the situation, um, you get an instant feel for it. And that's what you have to pay attention to is how does it, how does it strike you at the beginning, at the very beginning, before you decide to interpret it in any other way? How does it strike you? Well, that's probably something you are going to be looking at working on. And so that's where I, that, and that's where I said earlier, no matter what, uh, in classes that I teach on the tarot, um, no matter what kind of um, meaning you might assign to it, you can't let that get in the way of what's happening right now and how it affects you and feels to you right this instant, because that's your intuition. That's what you really want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so yeah, it's uh, I you know, don't give anything any more power than it needs, mm -hmm. and these cards, I mean, they're printed by the billions mm -hmm. on plastic faded, plastic coated paper. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they're not that special. Mm -hmm. They are only special if you make them so, and. I mean, I've got this particular deck I've been using for several years now. It's one of my very favorites. I've ordered a new deck by the same artist coming out in April. So we'll see. Which, which <laughs> deck is it? This deck is called The Legacy of the Divine Tarot by Ciro Marchetti. I wish I could see it, but it sounds mm -hmm. beautiful. <laughs> um, well, I don't even have... I don't have... Um, all I've got is individual cards. <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. I don't have the box <laughs> well, anymore. <laughs> I'll have to look it up. <laughs> sounds but if nice. you type in type in Cyril Marchetti uh, in uh, Amazon, he's got this is this is just one of his decks. He's got several out there. So, so very good. So, well, you want to do another one? Sure, sure. please. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> The next card that I picked, and this one gets a little bit, I get, I take some uh, uh, poetic license with this one a little bit more. So this one I had a lot of fun writing, and you'll find out in a minute why. <laughs> this is the magician. Can you see him okay? Yes. Okay. The magician. Um, he is, well... He's the counterpart to the high priestess. He's the assertive side, where the high priestess is a little bit more like, let's uh, push them in this direction and we'll let them take themselves where they're going, where he might be a little more inclined to create the situation. So, and the magician, <laughs> let's face it, he's one of the most controversial cards because he's proof. He's proof that there's evil here, right? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so, so I wrote this one as if he was on trial, and this was carried in the Daily Headliner, the local newspaper, and the headline says, Local Magician Cleared of All Charges. <laughs> A local man who prefers to be addressed as the magician walked away from court a vindicated man today after seeing his reputation questioned in two separate lawsuits. Judge Woody Gavel ruled earlier that though the two suits, <laughs> I like that one too, I like that. <laughs> were filed by different groups for different reasons, they should be heard together in open court. The first suit filed late last year by a group known as the Society of Hostile Odious Taxpayers, <laughs> shot, demanded that the magician be forced to produce proof that he is not a charlatan. Schott's claim is that the magician's entire body of work is a sham, nothing more than parlor tricks and sleight of hand meant to fool the gullible and uneducated masses. How many times have we heard that story? That's yes, <laughs> and so many things. Exactly. 
they further claim that the magician is fully aware of his fraudulent behavior and should be forced to produce evidence to support his, uh, his claims. Schott also claims that their membership has been adversely affected by the magician's actions and claims resulting in financial damages in the tens of millions for which they seek restitution. That's the first lawsuit. Second suit, nice. filed in February of this year. Of course, this was written, yeah, whatever. <laughs> now, this is where I got a little crazy. This was filed <laughs> by the frightened religious extremists of America. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> they, sought the, they sought the same cease and desist order that the original lawsuit sought, but for entirely different reasons. The religious extremists claim that everything the magician does is very real, very powerful, but that the source of that power is evil personified and can only be accessed by invoking the devil and his demon hordes. They also claim that their membership has suffered from the misdeeds of the magician through their, though their dollar estimates are much lower than the other group. And their solutions are more closely related to prayerful reflection and, in some cases, exorcism. Both groups insist that the magician must be stopped from foisting his brand of enlightenment on a free society of gullible, frightened citizens. <sighs> so, Judge Woody Gavel heard opening arguments from the attorneys representing both groups in early April and decided then that the two suits should be tried together to prevent any contamination of the evidence presented in each case. Schott is represented by their attorney, Ms. Drama, and Freya is represented by their attorney, Linda Virtuous. Ms. Drama was first to present her case stating the magician would be presenting purely circumstantial evidence of his own validity, but she and her client want the judge to insist that the magician present indisputable, tangible evidence uh, of his power, that his power is real. So when asked by the judge how she would quantify her assessment of the magician's evidence, Ms. Drama evaded the question. <laughs> Of course. Ms. Virtuous began her argument by adamantly refuting the assertions made by Ms. Drama. So they're canceling each other's lawsuit out. Is what the mouse do. And insisting that everything the magician does is the work of the devil and his demonic words. She insists that the magician be forced to keep his hand on the courtroom Bible throughout his testimony as she nervously fingered the crucifix around her neck. <laughs> When Judge Gavel asked her about how she would go about evaluating the magician's testimony, she referred to 2,000 years of church history as her expert resource. Of course. Well, the magician, the magician now, he did something that really should never be done. He chose to defend himself. Oh, boy. <laughs> but it makes all the sense in the world because his planetary attribution is Mercury, the god of communication and intellect. He began his opening argument by stating clearly that though he's a symbol of great power, and this is something you need to listen to real closely, he does not perform magic for those who request it. It is always up to the individual to actually perform the magic themselves. Ms. Drama's assertions are the same, he said, as a homeowner suing a tool manufacturer for the failure of a tool when the homeowner had failed to follow basic instructions and was using the tool completely incorrectly. It's like trying to, you know, use a hammer as a saw. It's not going to work. <laughs> As it does work well as a, a, you know, like, say, a pipe wrench as a hammer, but that's, that's <laughs> just me. <laughs> that's true. It's a good substitute. As the proceedings continued, Ms. Virtuous objected to the fact that the magician held his magic wand in his right hand, the same hand he kept on the Bible for her request. In overruling her objection, Judge Gavel stated, 
that the two tools should be considered as having the same effect. From this point on, Ms. Virtuous seemed so preoccupied with her nervousness at being in the same room with the magician <laughs> that her arguments started to fall apart. <laughs> the magician... Go ahead. The magician continued by saying that the source of his power and influence had long been the subject of debate. But he's not seeking to sway the beliefs of those who are determined to misunderstand his work. And that's another key point. Do you misunderstand because you're determined to misunderstand? <laughs> mm -hmm. Or do you just, are you just not quite up to speed on the information? There's two different things. The fear of the unknown has always plagued mankind, and since it appears to be a part of human nature, it most likely will continue to be a problem. That's the basic fear that everyone experiences. Mm -hmm. Those who are willing to open their hearts to understand have often seen the true power of freely moving energy. The hearing continued for three more hours, if you can believe that, with each argument presented by the attorneys being met with logical information by the magician. At one point, a brief recess was called so that Ms. Virtuous could regain her composure. <laughs> After Judge Gavel insisted that she provide proof of the source of the magician's power. So he kind of reversed things there, right? Mm-hmm. She demanded that the magician prove where his power came from, and that it turned out to be Ultimately, Judge Gabble threw out both cases for lack of merit, and failing to make any quantifiable losses by either group. So, as the magician was leaving the courtroom, I was able to catch up with him in the hall. Hey, for, Kevin? Uh, yes? Um... The, the paper rustling is just a little bit over your, your speech when oh, with that's so happening. So, no, that's okay. I just wanted to let you know so we could uh, you juggle that a little bit. Okay. okay. I knew that was going to be an issue, but I didn't realize it was so bad. Okay. <laughs> okay, so okay. I was able to catch up with him for a brief little interview as we were running down the hall. So I said, I noticed that unlike your opponents in court, you seem to maintain a cool, even-handed defense. The magician responded, he says, well, the arguments you were hearing, perhaps for the first time today, are the same ones I've been hearing for centuries. The thing <laughs> I am always amazed to see is what fear will do to people's ability to reason. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, that's true. <laughs> Mm -hmm. as, as someone who travels freely between the worlds, I have seen every stage of the human experience and way beyond. I see both the spiritual and the physical side of mankind. I know your motivations and your capabilities even before you're aware of them yourself. So what's the source of your power? Well, actually, it's you and every other person out there who is asking the same question. My power is really your power to act on the things I help you to see and nothing more. Nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the question of power sources is actually a simple one to answer. It's you and your human curiosity and nothing else. So, you might say then that you're the one who opens the door. Oh, well, I might even say I'm less than that. I might even say that I'm the one who shows you the latch on the door and encourages your curiosity and motivation to follow through on manifesting your best outcome by opening it. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Yes, it right. does. <laughs> So what's up with that wand? Well, the wand is one of the most recognizable magical tools in the world. Mm. Harry Potter. Right. <laughs> uh, and he's really helped. He's helped a whole lot. He's put a whole lot of magicians. He's given them a lot of work. <laughs> yes, he has. Sure. <laughs> yes. But I also work with other tools. I have a cup and a sword 
and I have a coin. Those are all symbols of the elemental energies which power this world. So they also serve me as reminders that we need to make use of every bit of our power, everything in our the mind, the heart, the body, the soul. Mm -hmm. They are all power sources, and we need to make sure we're using all of them. I, I find it interesting that he uses as tools the, all of the same uh, the, the suits of the terror <laughs> <That's laughs> That is that is true. They are all there. So, excuse me. <clears throat> so, are those your elemental energies? Are those your energy sources? All that elemental energy? Ah, so the magician says, "Well, the answer to that is a qualified yes, yes, because that's the understanding that someone like yourself, confined to a human experience, would logically reach." But in actuality, it's much more complicated than that. Some people see me as an energy source, and some see the elements as energy sources. But energy is present in everything, always. It's true. It can't be switched off. It can't be switched on. Energy has no beginning and no end. And we each have the opportunity to open its power whenever we choose. The only switch involved is the one we use to access the energy that surrounds us all the time. Okay, so it's not a matter you can you you can't shut it off. You can't, but you can actually you can flip the switch to tap in. All right. <clears throat> so I say, well, the paper ran a photo of you recently, and I I noticed a symbol above your head. What is the meaning of that? Well, now the card I showed you does not have that symbol. <laughs> But of most, course. <laughs> most tarot decks, it is called a linoseth. It's a, a figure eight that is pushed over on its side, and it represents infinity. It basically is, it, there's, there's, no beginning, there's no beginning, there's no end. It's constant. So this is the, the uh, magician response. He says, uh, a lot of images of me have that feature. It's a symbol which I just said resembles a numeral eight being pushed over. It's called a lim limniscate. Excuse me, I didn't say that right. Limniscate. And uh, represents infinity. So since we are all just varying forms of energy. Sorry, I'm trying not to. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just letting you know that we couldn't quite hear you over the rustling. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean These dang microphones. Oh, I don't. Well, mine will pick up things that are clear across the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're a flea fart. Yeah. A flea fart. <laughs> the dog snoring so, behind me, whatever. <laughs> so basically, all the energy that is within this building, this city, this world as a whole, that's what he's dealing with. That's Those are his energy sources. The they're just like the energy, the uh, elemental en energies, but they're more universal and all-encompassing. So I had to make him feel good. I said, well, you achieved a victory here today. How does that feel? Uh, actually, it's extremely distressing to have to spend a day defending my work to people who, as I said in court, <clears throat> are determined not to understand. Excuse me. I feel sadness for those who let fear or simple disbelief keep them from exploring their full potential. Mm -hmm. they shut down their personal will and therefore they fail to achieve any true enlightenment. Okay. Well then, do you feel that your appearance here helped the plaintiffs to see you differently? <laughs> no. No one is ever convinced to change by arguing the points of their disagreement. If you noticed, um, the one attorney grew more and more nervous and fearful as the hearing progressed, so that at the end, the fact that I prevailed simply proved her point. So she didn't go away feeling uh, like she lost. She felt like she was vindicated. 
Mm. Because, you know, only only someone slick like him could get away with this. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, well, I heard someone recently refer to you as a trickster. Uh, so much of what I am is determined by the viewer. <laughs> My response to those who see me as a trickster is, you know, a guy has to have a little fun in life. <laughs> so it indicates he might be just a little bit mm -hmm. of a trickster once in a while, and that's okay. <laughs> So, well, with this case behind you, what, you know, what's next? What, where do you go from here? Well, the magician says, I just want to get back to doing my job. My job of helping people like yourself manifest the things that are important to them. A day like this, that what I just did is especially challenging for an active participant like myself. So I'll be moving from the stagnant energy of a stuffy courtroom to the vibrant energy that surrounds me all the time. And that is the magician. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Nice. I like that. Yeah, I really mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> it gives you a little bit of a different, what I, what I guess I started out to do was to just take a little different view of each of the characters and they are each that's what they are they 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 really are characters that can they can do all kinds of things that we you know don't necessarily appreciate or notice and so that's that's the idea with what I was doing with that and it's all in it's all in the book <laughs> and as far as teachers yeah. yes <laughs> 22 teachers and that is uh yeah, I, the 22 members of the Major Arcana. So, any, go ahead. I was just going to say, so what? What, uh, what is your absolute favorite? Absolute favorite card? Yes, that you just absolutely, you know, get, th get a thrill every time you see. It's the Hanged Man. Oh, yes, you did. I know you said that, but I wasn't sure if that was your top favorite or if you yeah. had others. It That's really, really is. Cool. It really is. I mean, there are others that are that are equally, uh, you know, compelling mm -hmm. at times. But I think probably the hanged man is right up there. He's he's pretty much right up there at the top of the list of uh, characters that uh, that I like. You know, he mm -hmm. he's uh, oh goodness. There's there's so many. And I was talking about them the other day in one of my live shows. And whatever card it was I pulled, I said, well, it's like a housekeeping card. You know, get rid of the old to make room for the new. And and it just dawned on me at that very moment, they're all housekeeping cards. <laughs> they're all telling <laughs> telling you the same thing. Um, you need to work on <laughs> things like that in your life. And the things bring you to light. To, yeah. to get rid of and right. move on. So. Well, you know, ah, I the know. death card. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was going to say so. I was just about ready to say that. So many people get f totally freaked out when all of a sudden if they see the death card. And can you explain that for people? Sure. <laughs> and that I have to do it all the time. I'm and sure the reason, you do. <laughs> the reason that you get freaked out is because Hollywood has done a fabulous job yes, of, of making you frightened. <laughs> because mm -hmm. as soon as you see that that card show up, you can almost hear the music. You're like, oh, no. I wish I'd have pulled it out, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> The death card, uh, yes, the death card can actually mean physical death. It mm -hmm. can oh. carry that meaning. At, I mean, it's rare, but it can carry that meaning. Most of the time when you see it, it's talking about cleaning out the old stuff and making room for new stuff to come in its place. Mm. And if you look at the imagery, most of the time it's got a rather you know, a death scene. Um, the the Grim Reaper or you know whatever. It's, it's interesting. It, it is rather gothic and um... mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. But down at the very bottom of the mm -hmm. scene, there's a little rose or there's a little bit of green sprouting. Yep. There's okay. It's so it's an indication that what is going, what passes away, becomes renewed. Mm. 
Okay? Now, the only thing that's really scary about the death card is that you have to let go of the old stuff before you have any idea what the new stuff is going to be. Mm, yep. No, and no. That's, that's the scary <laughs> Not part. change. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that's... I need to get rid of some old earrings and bring in new earrings. <laughs> no! <laughs> 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 that's the, my meaning. <laughs> but, no, it's let, uh, let go of the old, the stuff that binds you, that holds you back. Oh, yes. Yeah. Letting go of that. So, yeah. all right. So, and no other questions on the, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, June. No, I was just going to say, and it's amazing when you finally do learn to let go of something and, yeah, I mean, like you're holding on so much to old hurts and pain and things like that. And sometimes when you finally let it go, um, all these new wonderful experiences come in because you feel more, I guess you'd say, rejuvenated to experience those new things. And uh, yeah, it's it's amazing when you can let something go and bring the new the new things in. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. <laughs> well, the other side of that is that the stuff you're holding on to is well, it's like a clog in your drain it yeah. just it doesn't allow anything to move it actually stifles and stops every single thing that you might want to do in your life and so yeah cleaning it out is a really <laughs> great so idea a little kale pectate and you're fine <laughs> <laughs> sorry I think that's that works the opposite way. Uh, yeah. Oh, does it? Oh, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Shows how much I know. <laughs> Maybe it's that's been, my problem. <laughs> it's been years, but yes, I think it works the opposite. <laughs> that's my problem now. Great. <laughs> so. can, I, uh, sure. can I ask, have you ever been tempted to maybe take a little different stance if the person you're reading for is being extremely obnoxious or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we deal, you know, that's, whenever you do something, anything in the public, you've got to be prepared for anything at all. Yes. I, yep. I had, uh, well, and I mean, this is just, just what you do. I had uh, someone come in, sit at my table, and I did a, a the initial spread, and I started to talk to her about what was showing up in the initial spread. She knew exactly what I was talking about. It, I mean, it was, it was obvious. She knew exactly what I was talking about. But her reaction was, I don't want to talk about that. I'm sure. Well, then why are you sitting at my table? Right, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I really, I honestly, I said, okay, well, then I'm not the reader for you today. Right. There are, you know, that that at that event there were probably fifteen other readers there. I said, you know, you go around and and see who feels right to you. But I'm not the reader. If if what I'm saying is is not something you want to talk about, then we can't really do much. So yeah. rather than rather than try to you know muddle through, it's mm -hmm. just easier you know go go find go find someone, someone else. Yeah. yeah. Or find someone that caters to you. <laughs> and, right. uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And most of, most of the time when someone does that and says that, no, 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 it's all of it is true and they know it. <laughs> mm -hmm. In fact, we I've done more than one, a lot of different ones where a person will sit and their friend or their sister or someone close to them will be sitting there listening <laughs> and the per the person I'm reading for is just shaking their head no and their their <laughs> their friend uh, is yes. Ooh, and, yes. Nile, yeah. Exactly. So and that's that's a, that's something that's kind of a natural human response. If you're not oh, ready sure. to face it, you uh -huh. don't and and I can't force you to. I mean it's not but uh, by the same token I cannot um I cannot um edit to the point where I just you know I take away the message. I can't right. So I have to I have to deliver what's what comes, or else uh, I'm not doing my job. That's so. true. Oh, yeah. And maybe and maybe hopefully you know those little seeds will be planted, and then they'll come back to you later and say, "Okay, I'm ready." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yep. Wendy, what were you saying? <laughs> well, uh, there was a Halloween party out at 
you've probably seen it on all of the spook shows, um, but at the Belvoir Winery, the old Oddfellows home in Independence, uh, excuse me, Liberty, Missouri. And um, I was dressed as a fortune teller and I had a deck of cards with me and theirs didn't show up. <laughs> so everybody kept asking me, are, are you the, are you the, are you the reader? Are you the, you know, the fortune teller? And I said, well, I'm dressed like one. And, but I got <laughs> tagged and I sat down at the table. And uh, so I'm dealing as the night goes on, they get more and more drunk. And then, <laughs> you know, well, the tips were great. I mean, okay. I filled up that donation <laughs> basket like 10 times. But well, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> then this a really obnoxious comedian guy came along. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was just doing one card draws and I drew temperance for him. <laughs> and the cards were hot that night. I mean, the <laughs> and the place is haunted. I I will never say otherwise about that particular establishment. But um, <laughs> that is true. He, he, I agree. Yeah, he goes, but what does that mean? And I said, it needs. It means you need to dial it back. <laughs> but what does that mean? I said, it means you need to move on down the line. <laughs> It was a lot of fun, but it at the by the end it was uh, started to become a little tedious. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it did. Yeah. Oh my god! There's there's not a whole lot of spirituality that mixes well with alcohol. I don't. Just... True. <laughs> <laughs> I see lots of spirits when I mix alcohol. Oh, I'm sure. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> so, oh, well, I have one more card if you're interested. Sure. Absolutely, please. <laughs> so this one is the fool. Ooh, this the fool. is card number zero in the major arcana. So that will talk about why he's card number zero or what difference it makes that he's card number zero. So this is another interview. So <laughs> I'll try and change my voice and not so you can recognize it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So most of the time, uh, the the fool is accompanied by his little dog. You see the little dog there in the hourglass, the other cards. Okay. So that's the first question I asked. I said, well, I noticed when you came in, you're accompanied by your dog. Is this a service animal or is this a pet? Well, he's both, really. As you'll note in looking at various images of myself, he doesn't always accompany me, but he is often attempting to alert me to obvious dangers. Other times, he seems to be just in a playful mood and being a faithful traveling companion. No, no matter how you see my dog, though, he is my only truly faithful companion. He's oh. never <laughs> critical of my decisions. Now, okay, there's something I should talk to say about before we go any further. Normally, in a most most decks, the uh, fool is shown, and he's got a knapsack on his back, on his shoulder, and he's about to step off a cliff. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's about to just, and he's not looking at anything but straight ahead, so he has no clue that there's nothing under his right foot, and the little dog behind him, and so forth. So, okay. So, uh, well, I noticed your your pack. Is, is, is this the pack that you carry? What, what is that? What's in there? Well, the pack you see today is a lot different than the one I originally set out with on my shoulder. I thought I would need a lot of belongings to survive this journey, but I soon learned that all that stuff was just more of a hindrance than a help. I really need to be free to move with agility. And so the pack that you see today just holds the things that I absolutely need. The most uh, notice noticeable aspect of your presence is your brightly colored and patterned clothing. So he's, again, dressed like a jester in most decks. Mm. Okay, so do you always dress like that? Well, obviously not. Go back and look at some of those images, and sometimes I'm not wearing anything at all. My clothing tells a story of my heritage as a storyteller, a sage 
and a jester. Hang on one second. Uh, in medieval courts, the jester was an important link to the outside world. The jester would be an entertainer, and at the same time, he's a newscaster to the court. Okay. The jester, jester was often able to convey difficult news, I'm going to flip my paper, <laughs> in a way that would not anger the absolute ruler. Oh, my. <laughs> if you think about that, we we have a similar situation today with some of the comedy shows, even Colbert for one. At mm -hmm. that time, when I wrote this, John Stewart was still very very much on TV, and they're regarded sometimes as more trustworthy than yeah. people in traditional journalism. Uh, I role. agree. <laughs> so. Daily Show, mm -hmm. John, <laughs> Steve Colbert, yes. <laughs> so. Tell us more about that major arcana. That what, how do you fit in? You can't help but notice that you're designated as a zero. <laughs> is that important? Well, actually, it is significant. While all the others in the major arcana have a stationary, <clears throat> even static position within the structure, that zero designation gives me the ability to be everywhere and anywhere. Most of the time I'm acknowledged as the beginning, but in some systems they put me at the end. Sometimes I'm the last card. I find that I'm comfortable being just pretty much anywhere. In fact, I'm comfortable being lost sometimes. Have you ever wondered, have you ever wandered off and rather hoped you wouldn't be found? I know that feeling. I know mm -hmm. that feeling pretty well. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you sometimes feel misunderstood? Oh, yes, but then don't we all? Mm -hmm. some, some people mistake my carefree attitude as an indication of in mental instability or inability. <laughs> and nothing could be further from the truth. The creative mind works in very mysterious ways. And they're often, often creative people are misunderstood by their peers. Just because I'm not following the traditionally accepted rules doesn't mean I'm less capable than anyone else. <sighs> okay, so how did this journey begin? How did you start? Oh, well, there's a story. <laughs> In the beginning, I was as wobbly and uncertain as an infant taking his first steps. I often just stopped and sat down to contemplate and question what my motivation was supposed to be. Eventually, my confidence began to grow. And finally, I was certain that I could take on the challenge and I could succeed. I found that confidence doesn't necessarily mean meeting every challenge victoriously, but rather finding that you can be secure in your insecurity. Think about that for a second. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's where what? you're comfortable so you don't move forward <laughs> exactly exactly mm -hmm. so you, some, you know and they say mm -hmm. as, as as they say nothing ever happens in your comfort zone so. yes that's true exactly. that's true i always say i was that's uh you know i was comfortable in my misery for a lot of years until i was like screw this <laughs> i've got it i need something different if i don't i'm gonna die here yeah. you know mm -hmm. emotionally everything yeah so I understand that, yes. <laughs> so, but it stinks sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just that it's just that initial getting over that hump, you know. Yeah. It's that that's the that's the hard part. So, what would you say is your single most valuable trait? <laughs> okay, that's easy. <laughs> it's my it's my attitude. I'm still a child at heart, and I maintain that youthful vision and wonder, which keeps me grounded. I never spend time obsessing about the past or the future, because my place is right here, right now. I depend on my intuition to direct my spontaneity, and there's a healthy dose of faith thrown in to the mix. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So I, I like that part where yeah. uh, 
I mean, he's he is very much living in the present. That is the that is the, the message of uh, the fool. So, okay, sh <laughs> shifting gears a little, tell us more about your planetary attributions. Ah, yes, my pedigree, as it were. Well, my planetary attribution is Uranus, which represents non-traditional behaviors, charting one's own path. It can also represent chaos and rebellion. Mm. So I think I'm comfortable with all those traits. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to throw any of them out. And what about your elemental attributions? Elemental attribution is air, which is masculine, active energy, and represents clarity. Well, are there any other parts of your pedigree that you'd like to share with us? Well, okay, depending on the system and the system that you might use for the tarot, I am associated with the Hebrew letter Aleph, which is the beginning of the Hebrew alphabet and is derived from the Egyptian hieroglyph of the ox head, mm. which has been a symbol of prosperity throughout history. Another symbol I'm associated with is the Nordic rune Win. W-Y-N is how you say that one, um, which carries a meaning of joy. Let's face it, almost every image of me depicts a joyful approach to life. Hmm? Okay, so now what labels hurt you? Ah, we touched on this a little bit earlier, but it would have to be those which assume I'm less capable. Some see me as naive, irrational, foolish, careless, and those labels hurt sometimes, especially when they fit. Huh. Got it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> the truth and, hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so, and what labels make you proud? Well, when people see me as I see myself, as joyful, carefree, fearless, optimistic, confident, that makes me really proud and happy. Okay, I got one last question. Okie dokie. Where do you go from here? Ah, well, how do I know where I'm going? And what do I care? My whole purpose, my whole existence is right here, right now. And the future will take care of itself, and I don't need to spend a single moment worrying or obsessing over it. You should try that for yourself sometime. But only if you are truly ready to be free. Mm. Okay? And that is... That's awesome. So, I have a lot of him, too. I bet so. <laughs> Well, I know those are those are such great stories for the for the cards, especially for people who, you know, want to start, um, you know, really getting into you know, the tarot. Just uh, and who have trouble memorizing a lot of times. Oh, something just turned on. It's kind of uh. weird. <laughs> it's like a little haunted. Oh, it was my watch. I'm sorry. Um, I was like, where's that voice coming from? I'm hearing voices now. Um, but, you know, it's really nice to have those stories. And sometimes it's, it's just really easier for a lot of people if they have a story mm -hmm. behind each card so they can remember a little better. So those are awesome. Really awesome. You just, I'm, you just told me, you just brought something to my mind that I haven't thought about in, oh my God, years and years and years. Um, did, has everyone heard of the Dale Carnegie course? Oh yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I my mean, mom and dad actually took that went back in. Um, they they both had taken it. I guess there was a course they used to offer, and I think it was like 1964, 19 uh, yeah 1965, like right before I was born. Uh, they uh, they took the course, and I found all their paperwork of their their course, the Dale Carnegie course. So mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I took that back in um, you know, the nineteen something a or while. other. <laughs> <laughs> a little while ago. <laughs> it was a, it was it was in the middle between here and 1964. Okay, somewhere in there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But what they did to entice you to take the course was they they served a, a free dinner. It was a oh. basic nothing it was it was nothing special but it was a free dinner to get you there and then they picked people out of the group to um demonstrate what they would teach you and he's the the instructor picked me out of the group he took me out into the hallway and he told me oh my god he told me this huge long story I can I can remember some of the elements of it now. There were, but he was he said now when you go back in he said don't tell the story just list the items that are in the story oh, wow. just just the items that are in the story. So he gave me I mean this thing was this was like a fifteen twenty minute long story, so there were probably oh there was there were over a hundred things. To remember. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> but you, it's, it's easy to do when you've got the story. True. And mm -hmm. so I went back in and <laughs> I remember this one, one guy who ended up taking the course with us and he came up to me and he says, do you have a photographic memory? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, no. I, I don't have much of a memory at all. <laughs> but I, I, I missed two items out of the whole list. Uh, wow. Well done. That's, yeah. that's and pretty it was, impressive. Mm -hmm. It was. And it, and, and it was impressive to me because I didn't even realize what I was doing, to be honest. I mean, I, I took the story. So you're right. The story, and as far as memorization is concerned, I absolutely hate that's why i didn't do well in algebra i hate memorizing <laughs> so i know the feeling um, <laughs> i i looked at the at the 78 cards and i mean you've got all you've got a you've got an upright meaning and you've got a reversed meaning all the little white books will tell you that okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's no way you're going to memorize all those right. yeah. i mean it, it, it might take you years but you can, i suppose you could um, <laughs> So that's why I what I do is a system. It's uh, yes, you do kind of have to get a feel for the for the major arcana, um, but they're easy to they're easy to feel. <laughs> they they have so much personality, um, and then the rest of the cards all fit into blocks. They fit into a system. The ace two three those are work cards. The four five six those are accomplishment cards and they so, uh, see those are those are um uh, uh oh goodness those are challenge and uh restitution kind of then the uh seven eight nine those are accomplishments and then the 10 of course comes along and it's a it's a two-part card it's a completion wrap it up and then start the new item. Uh, so it's it, 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 you know, there's there's a variety of different ways to to learn. I learned from a little book that was called Choice Centered uh, Tarot by Gail Fairfield. Um, I don't know if it's still in print, but she still she has online at least in Kindle, I believe. She has a copy that is that's the same, and I forget what the name of it is now. Look up Gail Fairfield and you'll find her. <laughs> but uh, her system is very, I mean, that's how I based my system. Um, but I used it to, to, to learn. And when they, some of the instructions will tell you, uh, one, one book that I had, which was not associated with a particular deck, said to uh, pick out the deck you like and then take that little white book and throw it in the garbage. You'll never need it. <laughs> uh, that's not necessarily good advice for someone who's brand new and green. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> because it, it's just overwhelming. So, I got, I started out with a a book called Tarot for Beginners. Okay. And it gave you lessons, and it was a big book, so I could read it easily. And you know, it was there if I needed to go back and and mm -hmm. check a specific meaning, or you know, it, I I liked it. It was a pretty good one to start with. Right. I think I might have tarot for dummies here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I think I might. <laughs> there's a there's a yeah, there's a dummies book for just about everything these days. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, yes. I need all the help I can get sometimes. It's like oh. <laughs> 
So, but the the idea of uh, meditating with the cards, um, it gets you acquainted. That's probably the biggest thing. It gets you acquainted with the characters, the people that are represented there. Um, that's probably the biggest um, benefit of meditating with them, because not only do they, I mean, it's helping you <laughs> to understand where you are in your situ your life situation, but um, it's also uh, very good at learning learning how to learning how to relate to them. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what I like because sometimes it just seems like it's so. I'm going to say, you know, over my head with so many different things. But this, like you said, kind of brings it back down how mm -hmm. it's, that was really nice. I really enjoyed that. It <laughs> de demystifies it. Yes. That's, mm -hmm. that's the story. <laughs> exactly. So. I got my deck here. Do you want me to draw cards for anybody or? Sure. Oh, why not? <laughs> can see. Well, it's, so, see. it's so hard. <laughs> drawing for yourself because it's you just can't be as objective as you need to be you're gonna fit exactly what it is where you're at and sometimes it's hard to get a bigger picture of your life when you're in there living it <laughs> mm -hmm. i have in my other book um tarot for lunch i mm -hmm. have a uh a spread in the back that is called the no spread spread <laughs> is specifically designed for reading for yourself. Okay. It, because the problem, it, just as you said, you're too close to the situation. It's mm -hmm. very difficult to get a, a real objective view. But the no spread spread, <clears throat> instead of having designated spaces, you know, this, this card means this, and this card down here means that, and um, it's a story. You start with the major arcana, you draw, you, you shuffle your deck and you draw until you get to the first major arcana card. That's the plot of your story. Then you take the very same deck and you, and you draw until you get to the first court card, king, queen, uh, uh, page, and knight. Those are, those are the court cards. So you draw until you get to the very first court card. That's the character you're going to play in your story. So you've got the plot, you've got your main character. Then you lay out seven cards in a row just right off the top of the deck. Okay. And then in that group you're going to have um, number cards which are the, those are the, the you know, those are the story. Mm -hmm. um, you'll find you may have other um, court cards that will show up. So those are other aspects of your life and your personality that you need to bring out to, to accomplish what you're doing. If you have another um, major arcana card show up, well, that's a plot twist. So you just, you, you can, <laughs> you, you are no longer, you are no longer the focus. You're reading a story and oh my gosh, it starts to make sense. Mm -hmm. it's, so it that's takes very you good. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good philosophy yeah. there. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy it. Uh, it it's, it's the spread I use for myself most often. So. Okay. Who wants to go first? Seth. Seth Michael in chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> Seth. I don't mm -hmm. know Seth. Now, that's another thing. I've, I've been doing these live things, so I... Um, I don't, uh, some of the people, there are most of the people that I, that I read for, I don't, I haven't met them. So I don't know anything about right. them at all, which is okay. Yeah. That's what I like. <laughs> mm -hmm. now that would be, uh, you do those through the, uh, the Oracle Scroll, correct? Yes. The Oracle, Sc Oracle okay. Scroll group is uh, where my live shows happen. I'm still working on an evening one. So we'll see. Okay. Another, another evening one. <laughs> so. <laughs> Okay, Seth, if you can see, I have a five of cups. Okay. Um, okay, cups are emotions, emotional attachments, relationships. Emotional attachments, though, can be, they can be all kinds of things. You can be emotionally attached to your car, uh, your career, your home. Um, most of the time, though, it has, it has to do with relationships. And the fives are challenge cards. Um, if you look at the imagery, you see, I'm, I have a mirror here, so I'm hoping you can see it as well as I can. 
Um, <laughs> no. Um, Seth won't be able to see it, but he oh, okay. uses a similar deck, so okay. or he has okay. one, so perhaps it's it's like say similar. Okay. It's by the same artist, so it's yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the the imagery shows three of the cups that are broken down in front, but the person that's sitting there is holding two cups that are intact. They're perfect. So what this is saying, and when I see these challenge cards show up, I always have to reiterate, these are not derailments. They are not, they're not total disasters. It's a speed bump. It's just saying, hey, you need to pay attention. <laughs> you need mm -hmm. to pay attention to this. And so this, if you're in a relationship, Seth, you need to... Well, it's time to buy some flowers. It's almost Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, you need to you need to liven it again. Put some put some effort into it again because um, it's not it's not over. It's just um, it's not everything it could be at this point. <sighs> and sometimes, you know, that's another part that that we have to deal with as a consultant, <laughs> a tarot consultant. Um, mm -hmm. they aren't all light and airy. <laughs> Some of them can be kind of heavy. In fact, I did a, I did a show one day where I did, oh goodness, I probably did a dozen readings and they were all like, oh my God, heavy. It was like, just, you know, that's the, that was what was going on. That was the atmosphere and the energy. So yeah, Seth, this is just encouraging you to spend a little more time with your significant other. Um, and make sure that they understand where you're coming from. Okay. He, he ordered a dozen for Valentine's Day. Perfect. <laughs> he thanks okay. you. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Yep. So, I made a joke today on on Facebook that uh, Todd's uh, Valentine's Day present arrived. <laughs> it was 90 day supply of all the drugs that keep keep the love of his life alive <laughs> that is true that's true <laughs> you know <laughs> that is the mm -hmm. most important thing <laughs> so. so who who's next oh i can go okay june Let's see, see what, what happens <laughs> aha well you already know all about this guy uh -oh. it's the magician oh my <laughs> 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 we just talked about him a whole bunch. Yes. So now when you get the magician showing up, um, first of all, he's powerful um, because he's one of the major arcanists. So he, he carries a little more punch. Um, it is saying it's time for you to get in touch with your own magic. Mm. Plug in. <laughs> and some of that, <laughs> how much time do you spend meditating? None. Okay. <laughs> Start with five minutes. Start with five minutes. You know, I guess I always think of um, meditation as, you know, I mean, I try, my mind goes in so many different directions and I try to just sit still and, and try to think, you know, I don't even know how I do it, but I'm doing it wrong. I know that. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. Sometimes there's no right way. Um, everybody's different. Every uh, physical you know, being is different. So you, you know what will what will uh, speak to you as far as meditation may not work for anybody else. Um, mm -hmm. But this is saying start with five minutes, okay. and if it helps, concentrate on relaxing your body. Mm. It's basically the same system that we use in hypnosis. So if you can start by just Imagining how relaxed your feet and toes can be. And then just let that move up your leg, move up to your knee and imagine how, and you can actually feel a physical shift. So you, you just imagine every part of your body relaxing and allow yourself to get heavier and just sink into the chair. I mean, you really, if there weren't support there, you'd fall over. That's mm -hmm. basically where you want to go. Okay. And 
let your and your mind can follow so that's why i always that's another the difference between hypnosis and meditation meditation works on the idea of quiet mind so you quiet the mind and everything else will follow hypnosis works on the idea of relaxing the body and then the mind follows right along oh there's mm. really no extra effort in it so if you can do you know like i said do it five minutes um it can be done while you're walking in the woods or, you know, doing something, something. I'm sorry, uh, walking in the woods. That was kind of funny. No. <laughs> or one of your yeah. favorite graveyards. I'm I don't afraid of that. <laughs> Nature and I are, are, uh, <laughs> you're, at odds. you're at odds. I think it's yeah. beautiful to look at. Yes. Um, my, my friend Jerry Wolf in chat, she says, it's okay for the mind to move around in meditation. Just mm -hmm. go back to listening to your breathing. Yes. Breathing is, uh, is another, that's another uh, aspect. So I you will can try that actually, because that's yeah. one thing I really, really have been telling myself, I think I really need to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would help a lot with a lot of things going on, especially my stress levels. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and if you've got, uh, you know, you've got your headphones, um, get some very soothing music. Sometimes, sometimes you, if there's a lot of commotion around you, even traffic, uh, can you know any anything that distracts you, just try to remove all your distractions as much as possible, and and then you know, kind of plant the seed in your mind that whatever whatever kind of noises might come up, they can just help you. <laughs> they can help put you into a, a more relaxed state. Okay. Sure. Okay. Sure. Right. Jerry's game for a card. Okay. Let's see what we got. Okie dokie. Jerry. Female. This is fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With an eye. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Okay. Jerry has. Oh, I'm sorry. Jerry can't see it, can she? No, um, she can't. <laughs> this is the Emperor. Jerry, the emperor. So we talked a lot we, tonight when we first started, we talked about the empress being the ultimate mother in the deck. Well, this is, this is her hubby. This is the ultimate father in the deck. Um, now, that is an assertive, almost sometimes aggressive kind of energy, but it's also, it's an energy that you are bringing to the table. So, um, Hmm. What this tells me is that you're in charge. <laughs> um, oh yeah. <laughs> whatever it is, whatever it is you touch, you're the director, the manager. You're the you're the person in charge, and uh, you use that. And this is this is the energy of that emperor card. You use that that um, ability and that calling to help other people and bring them out of their shells and get them to participate in life, okay? Now, the only thing you have to watch for is that you don't let it go to the point where you become sort of a tyrant and you begin, begin insisting on your own way. Um, so you have to be, you have to have that balance to mm -hmm. encourage and, and, and lead but at the same time, allow, allow them to do what they need to do to develop themselves. Okay. So yeah, the emperor card is a very, it's a, it's a very positive card. It's full of, of creative energy. And so that's, that's, that's where you are. That's what you're doing. And so keep it up. It sounds like you're, I mean, I've got nothing to indicate that you're not succeeding at what you're doing. So, hmm. I think so. I think she's very good at it. Jerry, I don't know. Jerry is because uh, are you doing some? Are you doing some writing? Is Jerry doing some writing? Does anybody know? I she does pottery, um, and okay. other she and is a bit of an eclectic eclectic witch. Uh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Well, I'm just I don't know about writing. I'm getting a writing thing. I don't know why, but I'm feeling like there's writing involved. And either you're doing it now or you're about to do it or you're still putting it together. It feels like it's almost, I'm not saying autobiographical, but something that's going to be almost like that where you tell your story. And um, yeah, 
and it's going to be so beneficial to lots of people. So, okay. Get on that book, lady. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about Wendy? Let's hear Wendy. Let's hear Let's something. See. Wendy, me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she oh. was thinking of starting a blog. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's right. Good thing. That's right. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. Validation is really important, especially I where I don't know the person, I can't see the person. I am. Mm -hmm. So yeah, right. it's, it's, it's it's nice to know, you know, when you finally when you do hit it. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Wendy, uh, I want you to look at this card, June, because it's this is oh. Wendy's card. I'm I can't see it, but you can't <laughs> <laughs> I can't see you. For some reason, I can't see you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's so, okay. Wendy can it's see me. Okay. Yes, it's, yes, I can so see you. So Wendy has the devil. The devil. Ooh. Okay, now this this yeah. card, I I like this imagery. I have to admit, but mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there's another deck called the Robin Wood deck that has the perfect imagery for this this card and the energy that it brings um in that in in that uh, image you're looking into a tunnel a long tunnel there's an opening at the end that you can see in the middle of the tunnel there is a chest of jewels that is overflowing that would be but nice. it, <laughs> it is chained to the floor and the ceiling and both walls it is completely fastened down there's no way it's going to move. On the opposite side of the chest, there is a man who is pulling it, trying to budge it toward the opening at the opposite end. And coming toward you is a woman pulling in the opposite direction, trying to get it to the opening in front of you. Mm -hmm. So the message is, let go. <laughs> let it go. Um, <laughs> And you know what I say about the devil? It's it's saying to let go of the stuff that's holding you back. Mm -hmm. And do you know what's holding you back? Yes, my mind. It's your head. <laughs> yep. And it's all those old, worn out belief systems that have they they no longer they no longer belong to us. They no longer do anything for us. They're just holding us back and keeping us stuck. Mm -hmm. And once you let go, oh my gosh, you'll be able to, fr you just run. You can, you can just, you can just go wherever you want. But at this point in time, there's still, you got to let, you've got to figure out how to let go. And you know what? It's just it's like. It's easier June said than done, but well, I have yeah. been working on it. <laughs> okay. Well, mm -hmm. June put it earlier uh, um, about being comfortable in your misery. And right. There's an element of that. We get comfortable, even though we know it's not doing anything good for us, mm -hmm. but it's easier than changing. Because yeah. changes are hard. Very oh, hard. yes. So, <laughs> so that's what the devil is about. And he's actually a very, it's, it's, a, it's not a negative card. It just says, hey, this is the work that's in front of you. So let's get at it. <laughs> I, with the devil, I feel... I, I definitely feel the oppression around me a lot, but um, it comes from above. <laughs> right, June? Oh. <laughs> and, and that's not, you know, we're talking that, above. That's literal, yeah. Above. yeah. <laughs> not, not the... Um, you have, not you the, have the upstairs, upstairs. The upstairs yeah. people, yes. yeah. The upstairs <laughs> people. Yeah. <laughs> I used to live downstairs from a woman that I swore to God she washed her bowling ball every night and then it rolled <laughs> off the counter. It oh, was like, she did. oh my God! It, I'm serious. It was it was like you would just you brace yourself and wonder, or, okay, what corner is it coming through? Because yeah, yeah. Through. <laughs> or did they fall? Or or just or did they drop the bowling ball? Did they? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, we had an investigation the other night and we were hearing um, sounds of rolling balls and, and things like that above us and found out there was no one up there. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was pretty, pretty awesome when we found that out because we were like, what in the hell <laughs> is going on? And then, Who's up there? No, nope, mm -hmm. no one was up there. 
Nobody it's there. all closed down. Yeah. And just hearing these rolling sound like uh, pool balls or, uh, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it did sound like a bowling ball it was so loud. It was just like, what is going on? But it's just a bar, a bar with no one there. Uh, closed down. Yeah. <laughs> Residual. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so it was very interesting. But, well, you know, we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, Kevin, would you like to say how people can get a hold of you? And also, you know, I, I think we've already posted your books in um I saw that. Yeah, and, and, and mm -hmm. everything. But uh, how can people get a hold of you if they'd like to have a reading and things like that? Okay. Well, my website, it's real easy. It's just Kevin Walder, all, you know, struck together, all one word, kevinwalder.com. Um, and all my all my services are listed on there as well as the books and so forth. I'm not real good at keeping it up to date but it's pretty up to date right now <laughs> i've been working on it this uh this winter um my uh email address is uh kevin underscore walder at me.com me.com um let's see the other one's a little more complicated i can I, you can also reach me at the oracle scroll uh that is the oracles scroll dot as uh, at gmail.com excuse me at gmail.com mm -hmm. and um so make sure you got two s's there oracles and scroll <laughs> that's the one thing some people miss um and of course my phone number is 425-220-9029 i do a um, monthly meeting that's coming up next week and i'm going to be doing that one too um June came and did a presentation for us last That was uh, really fun. <laughs> yeah, we had a good time. Um, but I'm, I'm talking about authenticity. And I think, did I try to show you the, maybe I didn't. That was earlier today. Uh, if you can see that at all. This is the this is the information that we're going to be using. It's uh, it's called a spiritual self exam, and this one is called authenticity, and it is actually using the tarot, the components and elements of the tarot, to identify and define ourselves. Uh, you might be surprised what what different kinds of things you come up with. And at the end, it'll also give you some information about what this incarnation is meaning for you and what what it uh, what it holds for you today. So, Very and that's nice. pretty much that's my that's my story. <laughs> <laughs> Very good story. Yes. Thank you for coming on and sharing. Yes, us with thank us you today. so much. Yeah, it just mm -hmm. it was really that was really interesting. I, I enjoyed that a lot. I like Good. to hear the stories. <laughs> yeah, well, and it makes and me want know, to get that deck too because it's really beautiful. Wendy has been posting pictures um, of of all the the cards that you've talked about, and it's oh, like okay. really beautiful artwork. It is gorgeous. <laughs> he is he's yes. a very very good artist, and I I enjoy his uh, I enjoy his take on it because there are some well. There are so many different versions of the tarot. I mean, and there's, I always say, in fact, when I talk about it in my lessons, I mean, you've got, you've got the ridiculous to the sublime. You've got the tarot of baseball, the tarot of the cat people, the tarot. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, just infinite. Yeah, I think I saw somebody had the, oh, we, we used to have a tarot reader that um, went with the craze of the, um, oh, the, Oh my gosh, what's it called? Oh, never mind. It was the latest. I was going to say Pac Man, but that wasn't it. <laughs> but I think she Pokemon? did actually have a Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> Sorry, I just had a laugh. So I'm not that old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I swear. Yeah. But I think she actually had a Pac Man deck too. It was really cute. But the Pokemon deck it was supposed to, you know, bring others down, younger people down. Um, oh. To reading. So, yes, she had it's very interesting <laughs> all the decks that she had too, um, all the modern ones. I prefer the golf. Seth is wondering. Seth is wondering if you consider yourself to be an empath, Kevin. He says you've got a very compassionate energy about you. Oh yes. <laughs> I well, <laughs> I okay. I'm going to be honest with you. I do not. 
put a lot of stock in labels. Um, and yes, I there I get my information. <laughs> I get my information, <laughs> and I so yes, there is an element of empath. There's an element of being a medium. I don't hang out that shingle simply because I don't want to mislead anybody. Mm -hmm. um, I'd much rather sit down with you and talk with you and uh, help help us both understand the situation. And that to me is much more meaningful than, and I, again, I, this kind of a pet peeve of mine, I guess. I have a friend who is constantly, every every month there's a new label. I'm a this this month and I'm a that that month. And it's like, just be you. Why in the heck do you need these <laughs> these extra labels? In fact, that's one <laughs> of the things I talk about in this program I'm doing on uh, next Wednesday. Is um, you remember those little tags that we used to find on the bottom of the of the uh, the chair in your living room and the then the bed spring and whatever we're right right the ones penalty, that do not remove uh, exactly <laughs> Under penalty of law do not well uh -huh. labels belong on furniture labels belong <laughs> on food labels be they don't belong on humans <laughs> so that's kind of the way I look at it is I I just want to be me I just want to be able to to do the work that I enjoy doing um, and help people as much as possible. But uh, I don't have to, I don't have, I mean, I've, I've tried to, uh, I've worn several different hats over the years and I just enjoy doing what I do. <laughs> so, so yes, Seth, I, I appreciate that. And I do, um, I understand what you're saying. And yes, I, I do think there's an element of that, but I, I shrink back from calling myself an empath because frankly, I've known some empaths that were not that great. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> they call themselves an empath anyway. And you're like, Hmm, <laughs> exactly. mm -hmm. maybe I not have... today. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I am putting a link to your event next week. Um, your awesome. Facebook event next week in the, in the chats. So you're so there good we go. at that. Thank you, yes, Wendy. she's really sure. Good sure. <laughs> no, she had that put together today when I I was kind of giving her bits and pieces, and then she had the whole thing put together. It was very nice. Yeah, <laughs> it's very quick. Thank you. <laughs> oh well, thank you so much again, Kevin, and uh, just really appreciate everything. And I just really appreciate you. You are just a wonderful. I don't want to put a label on you, but you are an amazing, <laughs> wonderful, caring lovable oh, person i just absolutely love the first time i met kevin i actually was just like oh my gosh hugs <laughs> <laughs> like, You're good at that. Oh. <laughs> i like his politics <laughs> <laughs> uh, we may have to, we may have to quit saying anything for fear we're going to be um <clears throat> Persecuted or uh, which uh, I guess it would be persecution and Persecu prosecution. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> One and the same these days. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Miss Wendy. Do you have uh, any parting words? Well, um, y'all can join myself and Cindy on Sunday. We'll be talking with Roman Delgado about yeah. soul level illnesses. Um, he wants to kind of put some of his sh shaman practices out there and so we will we will be going to town with that that's awesome that's oh yeah wonderful. yep good. and cindy so, is um uh kansas city astrology yes. dot com <laughs> and uh uh she she knows her stuff it, it'll be a good show real good show very cool and uh, I was going to say, too, if you want to get a hold of me, um, you can go on aghost.org and uh, send me a message through there. There's a contact form and any questions you have, that would be awesome. Sure. So, and you so, can reach us through our website. Oh, yes. Um, yes. MysticMoonCafe.com. <laughs> Or I should have going to say that next, and I totally forgot. <laughs> oh, uh, go ahead, June. Go right ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say, you know, <laughs> Please, reach us through that way, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. We we appreciate everybody who listens and, and comes into chat. And uh, 
you know, stay safe and warm out there as it's mm-hmm. snowing and icing and everywhere across yes. the country. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But all right. All righty. I will take us out with uh, more Mordred's lullaby, mm. and I think that's by uh, the McKenna uh, woman. But maybe. Lorena. Not. Lorena yes, McKenna. thank you. <laughs> for both a good, for bad and good sleep. Got it. I was struggling. <laughs> I need Pictionary. Good. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great week. We'll talk to you later. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Okie dokie. We. Oh